Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you nine affinity tips that you probably don't know. If you do, then consider this video as a refresher for you. All right, let's get started. Let's kick off with the first tip, which is a cool trick in the levels adjustment dialog. If you've never seen this before, you will definitely be amazed. So let's apply a levels adjustment layer. Now we can adjust the levels of the black point or the white point by moving the sliders. And here comes the cool part. If you press the Alt or Option key and move the sliders, Affinity will show you the areas clipped. How cool is that? Now, let's quickly move to our second tip, using a different color format in the adjustments. For example, in the curves layer, we can use, instead of RGB, the CMIK format, which will allow us to adjust the cyan, magenta or the yellow. This opens up more creative ways to adjust your composition. Or how about the lab format, where you can adjust the lightness, for example. Pretty amazing. The third tip is also something I actually need to use more myself. The separated mode in Affinity Photo. When you switch to separated mode, all the windows will become floating windows with the advantage that you can see multiple documents at once. However, the main reason to use separated mode is that you will be able to see the same document in two windows. You can add a new view to the current document from the view menu. This will allow you, for example, to be zoomed in in one window to do the fine adjustments while on the second window, you can see the overall image. This has a big advantage that you don't need to zoom in and zoom out to see the overall effect. If you only want to see the overall image, you could also use the navigator from the studio. Being in separated mode, will allow you to adjust the navigator window size according to your needs. And using the navigator has some other advantages, like controlling the zoom on the document window, but also quickly navigating to a specific part of the document when zoomed in. Let me close the navigator and use the second view as my overall view while I am clone stamping. Which actually brings us to tip number four, shortcuts to control the clone brush. By using the arrow left and the arrow right keys, you can rotate the clone brush. If you look closely, you can also see that the rotation value is also shown in the toolbar with the scale option. The scale option also has some shortcuts, arrow up and arrow down. With these shortcuts, you can adjust the scale quickly while you are cloning, as I am doing right now. As you might notice, I am cloning the trees with a smaller scale, which fits with the perspective of the image. This is one good example why scaling the clone brush can be useful. Let's move on with the next tip. Tip number five, select colors from outside the application. To demonstrate this, let me add a pixel layer. I'm going to fill this pixel layer with a color. Now let me select a color from outside the application by using the picker from the color panel and move it to any place you want to take a color from. In this case, I will sample the color from my desktop wallpaper. Really neat. The next tip, tip number six, is about creating a mask from a blend range. 
So let me apply the blend rage to the pixel layer I just created by opening up the blend options. One way of creating a mask from this blend range selection is to put the layer into blend mode erase, which now will erase the layers below. By using the merge visible, we can create a new pixel layer. If we click on this layer with the command key pressed, it will create a selection. This selection can be used to create a mask, for example, if we add a curves layer. When I option or alt click on this layer, you can see the mask. Let me remove the temporary pixel layer and reset the blend mode of the fill. Now, if we adjust the curves layer, you can see it only applies to the mask we just created. The erase blend mode we just use, we will also use in our next tip. Tip number seven, a non-destructive knockout text. To demonstrate this, let me add a rectangle and on top of it, some text. Now, I want this text to knock out the rectangle. Or, in other words, the text should become a see-through. We can achieve this by setting the blend mode of the text to erase. However, this erases everything. But we can easily fix that by making it a child layer of the rectangle, by dragging and dropping it as a child layer of the rectangle. It will now only erase the rectangle and we achieve exactly what we want. The text layer is still a text layer and we can easily change and adjust it. Let's quickly continue with our next tip. Tip number eight, using luminosity masks. You can easily create a luminosity selection by pressing Alt or Option and Command click on a layer. This will generate a selection of the highlights. If we add a curves layer, the selection will be used as a mask. If I now Alt or Option click on the curves layer, I can see the mask. Let me disable the selection by pressing Command D. This also shows another advantage of using the separated mode. As you can see, we now have a view but we also see the overall effect on the image while I'm changing the curves layer. And the final tip for today, tip number nine, is how to quickly straighten the image with the use of the crop tool. When you select the crop tool, the straighten button will be available. Just draw a line what you think should be horizontal and the crop tool will do the rest. You can also, of course, use it for creative purposes. For example, by intentionally giving it a rotated angle. Okay, let me know in the comments which of the tips was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.